this is the Underground Railroad program, and we're here to find out, as Underground Railroad always does, we deal with things underground and we bring them to above ground, on the surface, so that people can know the truth. And I'm here to find out from Doc Wallace just why have you run for government? Well, I'm a candidate for governor of the state of Illinois because we have to teach people one thing that we can and develop a smart economy and then to give every Illinois resident a better quality of life. There are some communities throughout the state of Illinois that are underserved and they don't get a fair return on their tax dollars. Oftentimes they get pity return in the form of health programs, but they don't get returns on their tax dollars in the form of development. Also, we don't properly fund our education system. The state of Illinois should provide 51% of the funding necessary for public school education. These are just some of the things that we're fighting for, things that we find deficient. Additionally, Pat Quinn, Dan Hines, don't have the vision necessary to lead this state into real prosperity. Well, one of the things that uh, I'm interested in also finding out, because there's something called politics, and there's something called politics. <laughs> and politics occurred with the lottery, where people believed that that money was going to be going toward education. However, it was taken and put into the general fund, all right, and not really used what it was supposed to be used for because the budget, they would allocate the same amount of money that was raised for education and take the louder money and put it in a general fund so they could use it for whatever they wanted to. How can we change that? Well, the first thing that we have to do is make a commitment to change that. We have to help elect legislators that are determined to improve our funding formula and that will not play shell games with money like lottery money as they have in the past. The other thing that we have to do is look out <coughs> traditional sources of funding, primarily real estate taxes, and look to private industry, give naming rights to schools, which can result in billions and billions of dollars statewide. But most importantly, we have to commit ourselves to providing a superior public school education for each and every individual child. Uh, the city council has submitted an ordinance to do a transaction track, uh, tax on the board of trade and the board of options of 1%. Mm -hmm. At that time, they was collecting $45 billion a year in the city of Chicago in 1995. Unfortunately, Alderman Mabar cabled it, so it was never heard. But $45 billion at 1% at that time in 1995 uh, converted to $450 million. And I'm sure it's much more than that now. And that's one way that you could help to fund Education. What do you think about that? I've seen that proposition floated even since you first introduced it. I gave it, to some, other, I gave it to some other people out there. Sure. Right? Yeah, no, after you left, other people picked up the mail, including Dorothy Tillman. The problem is, people have always seen Wall Street as a sick cow. They don't want to go after the money on Wall Street. They'd rather tax ordinary and average individuals, which isn't right. So that's a, the point that I was hoping that you would bring out because we've helped them with our tax money on Main Street and the side streets. Certainly. But yet Wall Street is reaping all the benefits and Main Street and the side streets are reaping nothing. No doubt about it. We have to have fairness and equity in that form, funding formulas and in our tax structure. We have to have comprehensive tax reform to stimulate the local economy to foster full employment. And there are no sacred cows when you look at who has to pay taxes, except for poor people. We don't need more regressive taxes. We don't need taxes that are going to tax people who are more than $14,000 a year. We need taxes that make sense. But at this point in time, with this tough economy, this troubled economy, we need to make sure that we're not doing things that hurt the business. So there may be an opportunity to do that in the future, but we have to write our state's economy first. Well, you know, years ago, the uh, new building they have downtown was built with UDAG funds. Mm -hmm. And they didn't pay a penny to have that building. They got the money from the federal government under the basis that they would turn around and create employment for minorities and low-income people. Until this day, that's never been done. No, it never happens. Whenever they promise to create low-income housing or create funding or jobs for low-income, 
that gets lost in the mind. They change the mind. So we're fighting to ensure that we have a sensible tax program that, that everybody can live with. And that includes reducing the taxes and the tax increases that Pat Quinn is going to put in place. We need to grow our economy. We need to focus on revenue growth. Well, one of the things we talked about when we talked in terms of the transaction tax that some of that money could be used to reduce property taxes. Mm -hmm. Not only could it be used to reduce property taxes in local communities, it could be used to reduce their water bills. And that would be an asset for the people in, who didn't have any money. Yeah, yeah, forgive me, Bertie, because I understand that. You know, I'll give you a copy of the I understand. I understand a lot of people want to raise taxes. I'm so against raising taxes. I would much rather grow our economy, grow our revenue. So that's what we're going to focus on, not taxes. Okay. Well, I think uh, for this segment, uh, I think you've answered most of my questions. Oh, one other question. So, you know, your opponent, uh, Pat Quinn, both of you are once upon a time with, with uh, Mayor Harold Washington. Mm -hmm. I don't call him Mayor, I call him Mayor Harold sure. Washington. And I've heard him lately always brandishing the mayor's name. But uh, I was uh, in City Hall with, as a bodyguard for an alderman. And I recall that Mayor Washington uh, fired him. Mm -hmm when he was the director of the Department of Revenue. And it was because he didn't want to do what he told him, ask him to do. And I can't understand. Is that a lie or is that the truth? I really don't want to get into that. I'm not going to pitch you. I, I, yeah, I, I said, said that. that. I you said didn't say that. that. And here's, here's the bottom line. In government, a lot of people serve at the behest of the chief executive officer. And sometimes it's not the right fit. Simply because he may not have finished out the term with Harold Washington doesn't mean that he wasn't a good administrator from his perspective. And you grow. That's been over 27 years. And it's important that we talk about that because we were part and parcel of history. But at the same time, sometimes there are separations for a lot of different reasons behind the scenes that we don't know anything about. Okay. I'm through with that section. Exactly. So you don't have to be asked. <laughs>